Well, let's now go back to the first suggestion. Let's think about the internet as a graph where nodes are machines and links are direct <laughs> communication connections. So, suppose in particular I send email to uh, someone at my alma mater, Cornell, you know, who are out stuck in the frozen tundra out there. Suppose I send them an email right now. Uh, that has to get from, in particular, the Stanford Gateway Router to the Cornell get Gateway Router. And I can assure you there is no direct physical connection between the Stanford and Cornell Gateway Routers. Okay? So you're going to have to go through various intermediate destinations to get from Stanford to Cornell. And there's multiple ways you could do that. It's not like there's a unique sequence of hops across the states to go from Stanford to Cornell. So a question that arises, which is, which way is this data going to go, this email? Okay. So which Stanford, say to Cornell, path to use? Okay. So in the face of lots of paths from Stanford to Cornell, what seems like kind of the obvious path to prefer? The fastest. Yeah. Or in some sense, uh, right. Good. So let's call it the shortest to be uh, just to be consistent with algorithm technology. And let's just to keep the discussion simple, let's assume that sort of the fewer hops that you take, the faster you are. Okay? So let's just focus on that aspect. Okay? So e.g. fewest number of hops. So in other words, we're going to make the decision, the policy decision, that we will prefer a path. We'd rather have a path that has only two intermediate stops, say through you know Dallas and St. Louis, as opposed to one that has three intermediate stops. Okay, Salt Lake City, Chicago, and Pittsburgh. So, okay. So then evidently what we need to do internet routing, according to just this simple policy, is we need to, at some point, we need to sort of run a computation, run an algorithm that figures out which of all of the paths between Stanford and Cornell has the fewest number of hops, has the fewest number of intermediate stops. So obviously, to do any kind of reasonable internet routing, we need some kind of algorithm that looks like a shortest path algorithm. Can't get around it. Does anyone remember the name of some shortest path algorithm maybe they saw at some point? Dijkstra. Dijkstra. Great. So that's often the first shortest path algorithm that you see. If you don't remember it, we'll be covering it in detail here as well in about two or three weeks. But I think a great first suggestion would be to say Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, so that's a good suggestion, but then you think about it a little bit, and you realize there's a problem. Okay? So it's fine if you've never seen Dijkstra's app, remember it, <coughs> but if you do remember it, what you might remember is that you kind of have to have the whole graph in memory to run it. Okay? So it's basically this sort of greedy, sort of a breath like thing, where at each node you try to find the best node to go to next. So you have to know what all the nodes are to figure out what node to go to next in Dijkstra's algorithm, and that requires knowing what the graph is. And remember, in this context, the graph is the entire internet. Okay? And we're just talking about some computation being done locally at the Stanford Gateway Router. So, the problem then the Stanford Gateway Router would need to know entire internet. Okay? This entire graph. To run Dijkstra's algorithm on this graph. Okay? And even ignoring possibly solvable problems like amount of memory and that kind of thing. I mean, the point is, I mean, it just, if you think about it conceptually, it makes no sense for Stanford to keep track of the details of the network halfway across the world. Okay? If you can have an algorithm that doesn't need that, you would want such an algorithm. Okay? So Dijkstra's algorithm is very useful, that's why we're going to talk about it, but it's actually not that useful for internet routing, at least sort of on a macro scale. Okay? Instead, to 
It's one of the foundations of how routing is done in the internet. It's an alternative shortest path algorithm. That in some sense uh, uh, needs only local computation. What I mean is that for the standard gateway to figure out where to send this email to Cornell, all it has to do is communicate with the other vertices, the other nodes to which it is connected directly. As long as Stanford knows what's up locally to the things that it's directly connected, and of course everyone else is also knows what up, what's up with the nodes to which they're directly connected, then that is sufficient for the shortest path algorithm to work. That is a property which, if there existed an algorithm that had it, clearly that would be super useful. Because we'd get the exact same shortest path functionality of Dijkstra while losing only local computation. That makes much more sense on sort of a large scale uh, shortest path computation. Fortunately, it's not obvious such an algorithm should exist, but it does. It's called the Bellman Ford algorithm. And by the time we get to it, the Bellman Ford algorithm will just be easy. It will just be a totally uh, cookie cutter application of dynamic programming, which we'll study uh, for a couple of weeks toward the end of the class. Okay? Again, sort of the takeaway point here is that, you know, internet routing, it's a computational problem. It's obviously there. It obviously needs to get solved for the internet to function. And the way it's really done in practice, or at least, you know, the way it's done in practice is a little bit different than Bellman Ford, but Bellman Ford is definitely the starting point. Those of you who take 144 or 244 will discover. So the point is the evolution of how routing has been done in the internet has been completely guided by the mathematical properties of these shortest path algorithms that we're going to study. Okay, the algorithms are actually from the 50s. They even predate the ARPANET, which is from the 60s. But nonetheless, those algorithms have shaped the evolution of how the internet works. So that's example one. Let me tell you about example number two. 